This guide shows you how to get into a developer's tool menu so that you can see what's happening on your Fire TV stick. Now, this does seem to be a bit of a black art and requires plenty of practice because you've got to do um, certain things with your remote control. So first of all, you need to press the picture of the house once to make sure that you're back to the main screen and then push the confirmation or the OK button, the button in the center there. Just push it for about a second. There we go. And then we push the button again and push that again and then quickly push the down button and hold it down for about three to four seconds. Then let go and then press the menu button just there. And there you go, the developer's tool menu appears. So you might want to practice this a few times because obviously if you turn any of these features on and you come out of this, you're going to need to be able to get back into it again. So what I would recommend is push the back button to get rid of that menu. Press the picture of the house. OK, so you're back to the main menu. Press the OK button or the center button once. OK, and then press the center button. And just after you've pressed the cent and held the center button down, press the down button for three to four seconds, then let go and then press the options button just there. And there we go. The developer's tools menu now appears. So as I say, once we're in there, we can just have a look at see what's about. So we've got the system X-ray menu there and that gathers instantaneous system metrics and displays on the top of the screen as an overlay. When toggled on, the overlay will always be visible on the screen. So if I turn that on, there you go. So you've got there your display settings. So it tells you the display mode that it's in 1080p. And it also tells us the frames per second. That's the 59.93. And it also shows you the HDCP. That's the high bandwidth digital content protection version used by the Amazon Fire TV to encrypt the contents that's sent through the HDMI cable to the TV. So uh, try and stop you from copying stuff. The next thing we've got there is the CPU. So depending on what CPU you've got in your Fire TV stick, you might not have as many columns as this. So green means there's low utilization. That's between 0 and 33%. If it's orange, then it's moderate utilization, which is between 34% and 66%. And if it's red, then it's between 67% and 100%. That's high utilization. So uh, there might be some devices that have only got two cores. So you'll only have two columns. My one's got four cores, so therefore I've got four columns there. So the CPU utilization can help identify CPU intensive apps. So as I say, this is really designed for developers. So developers of apps for the Fire Stick really should uh, should be using this. But sometimes it might be helpful to find out, you know, <laughs> certain things about your Fire Stick. The next thing we've got here is MEM, which is memory, RAM. So you've obviously got this blue little section here, and that is the foreground app memory. So it shows the memory usage specifically to the proportional set size of the foreground application, not the GPU memory, that's the graphics processing memory, and the package name of the foreground app. So there you go, the package name of the foreground app in this case is com.amazon.ssm which is obviously the, 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 the developer's tools menu. So the other memory, which is in grey, shows the memory usage by other applications. And it tells us there, there you go, so the foreground memory is using 26.4 megabytes. The background memory is using 1.2 gigabytes. And we have 121.2 megabytes free. The next section shows you the networking. So this shows you the RSSI, that's the Receive Signal Strength Indicator, shows how strong the Wi-Fi signal is, and it's measured in dBm, which is the value of radio signal. The bar indicates the signal strength and is color coded using the same color coding scheme as the CPU system. So we've got green is a strong signal, orange is an average signal, and red is a weak. The number is always negative, don't worry about that. DBM is always measured in a, 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 as a negative. 
So as you can see on mine, it's minus 40 dBm. So the better the signal strength, the lower that number will be. So it'll be closer to minus naught if it was a very, very strong signal. So system there measures how many bits per second are being actively downloaded to the Fire Stick, including both visible and background apps. This is not available bandwidth. If naught BPS is displayed, no data is being downloaded at the moment. And visible measures how many bits per second are being actively downloaded by the visible, also called the foreground app. This number will never ever be higher than the system download speed. So the network section can be used to diagnose issues such as connectivity issues, slow download speeds and lower quality streams selected by the media player. And the last section on here is REM, which is short for remote. So that tells you the battery level, so how much battery is left. As you can see in my case, there's 77% left and I imagine that will be colour coded. So the lower it goes, the, uh, the colour will change to orange and then if the battery is virtually depleted, it'll probably change to red. As you can see, mine's green at the moment, which basically means that my remote has got good amount of battery life left in it. So I can turn the system x-ray off just by pressing the middle button there, just to, there you go, turn that off. Or I can turn it back on again, just by pressing the middle button again. So we've got advanced options here. So that enables multimedia information to displayed when the Android media codec APIs are in use. So on screen, you will get some uh, details about the uh, codecs that are being used. So I'm just playing one of my videos on YouTube. And as you can see on the right hand side of the screen here, here's some details which tell us about the audio and video codec that is being used. And also here you can see the, uh, obviously the bar at the top of the screen because I've left that bar on there, which shows you what's basically being used. And as we can see here, there you go, the foreground application is Com Amazon Fire TV YouTube. So it's a YouTube app I'm currently using. So let's go back to the uh, menu. So let's just press the picture of the house on the remote control to take us back to the main menu. And then I'm just gonna press the middle or confirmation button just once, okay? And then I'm gonna press the confirmation button and then the down button and keep it held down for three to four seconds. Then let go and then press the options menu there. And there we go, the developer tools menu comes back. And we can obviously switch that setting back off again. And I'm gonna switch the uh, system X-ray setting off here. So we've got launch configuration panel. So on here, this actually controls what's being displayed on screen. So let's just go back. Let's just turn the system X-ray back on. So go to launch com uh, configuration panel here and I can turn different sections on and off from that panel if I want to. So uh, just by selecting or deselecting these, I can also say whether I want it at the top, on the left, on the right, on the bottom. So there you go, I can choose where it is, just in case it's in the way of whatever I'm doing. I can turn multimedia on or off. I can turn audio focus stack on or off. So let's just go back. We've got there uh, record and share, so it enables developers to get recorded metrics through a command line. So we've got a safe zone there as well. So the safe zone, when we turn that on, puts this red border around the outside. So it says here, some TVs use overscan with their display. Overscan means the TV displays some information off the edges of the visible screen to accommodate discrepancies in monitors. You should not display important information in the overscan areas. To make the overscan areas visible, you can turn the safe zone switch on and this will make overscan areas apparent so you can avoid displaying information in those areas. So basically you don't, if you're developing an app, you don't wanna put any information in the red area there. So let's just turn that off. We've got their developer options there. So we, this enables the options that are currently available. So we've got, you can turn the developer row on or off. So uh, that's in the launcher to help partners develop code. You can clear recommendations there. Okay, so we've also got network proxy. So if you want to, you can set up a network proxy here 
on the Fire TV stick. Clear credential storage, so this removes all user certificates from the device. And we've got Launch Network Advisor, so this is actually a screen that's already on the main menus options, so you don't actually need to have the developer tools for this, but this tells you just a status uh, about the Wi-Fi strength that you're currently receiving and tells you about any recommendations that you might need to improve your Wi-Fi signal. So I'm just gonna press the back button there, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this system X-ray off because I'm finished with that, and then I can just press the back button on the remote control and the picture of the house because I'm finished. So there you go, that's a great little secret developers menu. Ideally it's there for if you're developing apps for the Fire TV stick, but might also be handy if you want to try and rule out any issues that you have with any apps or Wi-Fi signals problems. I hope this guide helps and thank you very much for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at CWTech. That's at CWTech on Twitter. And don't forget to check out my other videos in my YouTube channel. Just Google Chris Waite YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your support.